Olive oil is unquestionably one of Andalucía's most important products. Few are the chefs and food professionals who haven't heard that Andalucía produces much more olive oil than any other region of the world. But Andalucía's gastronomy doesn't begin and end with olive oil. Olives, too, play an important role on the Andalucian table. Almost every bar starts off a tapa selection with a plate of cured green olives, large and succulent manzanillas or gordales, or aceitunas machacadas, lightly crushed and mixed with thyme or fennel, just the thing to accompany a glass of dry fino or manzanilla. A number of other products from this dazzling region deserve to be better known. One of the most prestigious is without a doubt jamón ibérico, or jamón de bellota, the very special ham that is produced from pigs like these. They're a breed called Iberian, or ibérico, a very ancient breed of black pig. Another name for the pig is pata negra, or black hoof, indicating the pig's color. An important factor in the quality of jamón ibérico is the way the pigs feed. Grazing on the Dehesa, a unique ecosystem in the western part of Andalucía, where vast oak forests provide a primeval diet of acorns, as well as roots and grubs, for the pigs. The curing system is long and slow, and relies on natural factors like fresh air and cold weather. Finally, the hams are hung in a dry, lofty space for up to a year, and then transferred to the more humid climate of a bodega, or cellar, for as much as two years before they're considered ready to eat. It's the cellar master's job to figure out when the ham is ready. To do that, he inserts a thin bone, actually from a horse's thigh, right into the ham, then sniffs deeply and considers the aroma. When it's perfect, the ham goes to market, or it gets sliced right on the premises. Notice the black hoof on this ham, a reminder why it's called pata negra. Slicing jamón ibérico is a great art, and the finest cellar masters are also masters of this technology. Jamón ibérico is not the only ham from Andalucía. There are also a number of mountain hams, jamón serrano, that are made from the meat of a more common breed of white pig. They're cured in a similar fashion, except for the final finishing in a humid bodega. Instead, Jamón Serrano goes straight to market after its final curing in an airy attic. While Jamón Ibérico, with its distinctive umami flavor and aroma, is rightly judged as one of the crowning glories of Spanish gastronomy, Jamón Serrano is not to be dismissed. In his tiny shop called La Oliva, in the heart of Granada, Francisco Lillo has collected very special food products from all over Andalucía. Olive oils, vinegars, cheeses, fine cherries, and of course, jamón. The ham on his left, which he's slicing now, is a jamón ibérico, while the one on Francisco's right is a jamón serrano from the Alpujarras. While we were visiting him, Francisco made a delightful tapa, very simply, with thin slices of head cheese on lettuce leaves, dressed with salt, pepper, and an aged wine vinegar. This particular vinegar is made from aged Montilla, a local wine from Córdoba, and Pedro's Jiménez, a very sweet wine made from sun-dried grapes. Another more familiar vinegar from Andalucía is aged sherry wine vinegar, like the vinegar aging in these barrels at Vinagres de Yema in Puerto de Santa Maria. Inga Herman is the export manager and explains something about the complex process by which this superb ingredient is created. There's an official definition by the Consejo Regulador. For standard cherry vinegar, it must have been at least six months in, uh, in wood barrels, and for the reserva, for at least two years. We have the soleras, which are the barrels, which used to be the barrels on the floor, from the Spanish word suelo and we take about one-third out for delivery or for bottling and this one-third is being substituted by the first criadera and then we make it again from the first criadera to the second, to the third and to the fourth and so on. Spanish sheep milk cheeses are well known, so it's a little surprising to find that Andalucía is famous for some very fine goat's milk cheeses and that in fact 
the region around Thueros, a tiny village in the Subetica mountain south of Córdoba, used to be the largest area for goat cheese production in all of Europe, according to Juan de Dios Serrano, head of the local cheese makers cooperative. Indeed, starting about 20 years ago, the number of small cheese producers of artisanal shops like this one have increased dramatically. And these producers have taken the lead from household production and producing for just their families to something more professional and have been producing cheese for the current market. Currently in Andalusia, uh, we have about 100 small cheese producers, similar to this one. And every year, they all get together for a raucous celebration of all things cheese. This village of just 800 souls welcomes every year in September a crowd of up to 10,000 cheese lovers who flock here to taste offerings from all over Spain. Although the locally made cheeses are of course most prominent. There are goat's milk, sheep milk, even cow's milk cheeses on offer. And there should be enough for everyone to get a taste. Even small children dig in happily, especially when there is cheese to be made. In Andalucía, cheese making is a tradition that carries on over the generations. Hopefully in the future, more and more of these excellent cheeses will be available in fine cheese markets in the U.S. A most unusual product that is not well known in America, but ought to be on every conscientious chef and restaurateur's list of must-haves. Rio Frio caviar, produced in the mountains west of Granada on the banks of a cold mountain stream appropriately called Rio Frio. If you want to know when is a really good caviar, which is very important, is uh, whenever the, the, the roe explodes inside your mouth, the, the membrane of the roe must disappear. If you keep uh, feeling the membrane in your mouth, it's because it's been or pasteurized or it's not a good quality caviar. The process is a very delicate process because as you know, caviar is a very delicate product. We have like a surgery room where we produce caviar. So we must have everything clean with alcohol. The process is the person who kills the animal, open the animal up, separate the meat from the animal, and the person who is gonna make the caviar, get the hands inside the fish without touching the, the, the outside of the animal because if the animal comes with any kind of bacteria, we don't want to contaminate the, the, the caviar. So this person get their hands inside, remove the gonad, and then they, they go through a net with the gonad to separate the gonad from the roe. This roe must be washed with really cold water and then must be sold. The caviar master, uh, we have different recipes, and depending on the, of the flavor of the caviar, the caviar master uh, uses one recipe or a different recipe. And it's, uh, the whole process takes no longer than 15 minutes. So if we get a, a 40 kilogram sturgeon, we get from four to six kilograms of caviar. And we put it in what we call the, the mother tin. It's a tin of one kilogram or 1.8 kilograms. We mature the caviar for at least four months. The main point of our facilities is that our animal uh, live in spring water. I mean, really spring water, because the source of the water is 50 meters from our facilities, and we don't control the temperature. And the most important part of exporting caviar, we must be totally sure that our importer is going to keep the caviar at the correct temperature. The perfect temperature to have caviar is at 8 degrees Celsius. When, you know, when, when caviar is served, usually it's at 4 degrees Celsius, so it's a little bit colder than it, used, uh, than it should be. The cold chain is so important in this product. If you uh, leave uh, the caviar at, uh, temp at uh, room temperature for one, two days, you can forget about that tin. And one thing which is very, very important in order to have caviar is, once you are going to have caviar, make something special. When you explore the riches of Andalusia, you will find more than just beautiful countryside, fascinating history, and an exciting cuisine. You'll find a bounty of specialty products. <laughs>